you too what's going on it's your boy g tech the Gojody man and we back with another video man if you see the title of that video and you see what's in front of you right now you already know what we're doing today man we unboxing another Sali optic this is my third Sali optic and actually i've been getting the same optic <laughs> man this is the wolf zero hold on oh wrong side this is the Sali wolf zero man this just gonna be in the unboxing this ain't gonna be a full review a uh, full review on the way though definitely but yeah man if y'all want to know all the specs of this i suggest y'all go check somebody else's video out but we're gonna do a little unboxing and i'm gonna tell y'all what i do know you know what i'm saying i'm not reading nothing this ain't scripted but let's open this up though so you get your instruction manual yo your instruction manual boom you get a card with two links on it from Siley. You get uh, a guide to help you adjust your zero on your dot. Siley sticker. You know we love the stickers, man. You know we love the stickers. Um, inside, your dot is going to come with this rubber cover on it already. I just took mine off because I didn't already install mine. Then you get a bunch of screws, man. You get a bunch of screws. I think you get three pairs of the same screws, three different screws. So this is gonna accommodate anybody that buy this optic. They're not gonna have to go, go out and buy no hardware, man. They're gonna have it already. So a bunch of screws. And then last bag in here. Of course, you need your tools to go ahead and zero and your other tool to go ahead and install your dot onto your pistol, man. So that's everything y'all get in the box that's everything y'all oh oh sorry one more thing one more thing and then you get a 1913 picatinny mount for your rifles if you want to put this on a rifle or something with a 1913 rail you can go ahead and do that too so that's cool right there so that's everything you get in the box man and i just want to get that out the way real quick this is a 3moa dot you know what I'm saying? It's a nice reticle, man. I've been busting it. Not for super long, you feel me? I've only been busting it on two of my pistols right now. I only got, between both Sally Optics, I probably got about 300 rounds. So, wait till I hit a thousand or something on one of the pistols, and I'm going to do a full review of the Wolf Zero, man. But now that that's out of the way, now that that's out of the way, mm, 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 mm. I done finished. Well, nah, not finished, not finished, because it ain't never done, you feel me? But... I done got another piece, you know what I'm saying, for my P80, and that was the Wolf Zero that y'all just seen, you feel me, so, mm, 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 threw it on the P80, man, stupid crazy, stupid crazy, man, now that this is done, or not done, but ready to be shot, you know what I'm saying, I can't wait to go to the range with this, man, and put some rounds down with this, I'm gonna predict it right now, y'all, I'm going to predict it right now. I think I'm going to be sharp shooting with this. I think I'm going to be on point with the P80. I just feel like this is going to go so stupid, bro. Like, for real, for real. It's probably going to make me finish my other one <laughs> that much quicker, you know what I'm saying? Because this is, man, it might make me pick up another one. I might want to try out the um, Glock 17 version of this. I think that's the PF, not the P... Okay, I don't even know what it's called, but yeah, I want to try the Glock 17 version of this though. I love how the P80 feel in my hand, man. It got all the real estate I need. I don't feel like I got to fumble around. Man, how y'all feel about running a dot with standard height sights? How do y'all feel about that, man? It's just something about me, to be honest with you. I just haven't got around to it, but I see myself eventually getting suppressor high sights just because I want to have that backup. And not even just because I want to have that backup. I like switching between the dot and shooting my iron sights. I mean, you could do that too with this because this will teach you within your, you can use your uh, reticle, you know what I'm saying, as your rear sight, basically. I mean, you could use your... um. You can use your dot as your rear sight, you know what I'm saying, and then just align in the middle and see where you're hitting and then do your holds. But 
I'd rather just have the sights, <laughs> the, the right height sights, you know what I'm saying? I don't like cold witness, but I do like lower one third. I don't know nobody that like actual complete cold witness. That's kind of, I don't know, on a pistol, I don't know. Maybe on a rifle or something. But yeah, man, this build right here is sexy, man. Look how it looked when that light hit it. So imagine how this thing looked outside in the sun. I hadn't even been able to take this out yet. I can't wait to go to an outdoor range, man, and bust this. Where all my people at in AZ, man? Where's all my people at in AZ? Where are my shooters at, man? In AZ, man. Comment on this video. We need to go outdoors, man. I got a lot to be shot, man. I got a lot to be shot. A lot of pistols to be broken in, man. Rifle build, AR9 build on the way. Y'all be waiting on that video, too. But, man, I love how this is coming together. As far as a laser light or just a light... I don't know what I'm going to do for this, man. I don't know what I want to do. <sighs> it's going to take some thought. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely going to take some thought. Because whatever whatever setup I do for this, this is the same setup I'm going to do for my SCT-19. And then my same with my SCT-17 once I get it. Because they all got the same uh, light mounting system, the 1913. So they'll, in theory, they'll all fit in the same holsters. They should, if it's a light bearing holster. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about right now. And it's too many options, man. Hey, man, is it just me? Or does anybody else ride too high on their slide when they shoot? To the point where uh, the slide never locked back. Anybody else have problems like that? Because I'm still trying to work mine out. With my XR920, with the dagger, and with the Nomad 9X. I ride too high. But for some reason, it's weird, man. It's weird because for some reason with my factory Glocks, I don't have that problem. Like my Glock 45, never, none of my Glock 45s. My Glock 19 when I had it, never had that problem. I could ride as high as I want all day. And that thing would slam back, slam back forward, go back in the battery, everything would be cool. But it's something about these other guns, I don't know, man. Maybe I changed, maybe I'm riding even higher, I don't know. But I could have sworn, because I remember it was, it was like groundbreaking for me when I finally found a grip that was stable enough, you know what I mean, to keep them shots consistent, and that was a high grip, you know what I'm saying, I would, this is how I would think in my head, my front grip would be front to back, you know what I'm saying, y'all know how it is, squeezing, instead of choking it, instead of choking it like this, you know what I'm saying, like this, you feel me, so that would be my right hand, and then this hand, when I'm coming up to put my sights on target, I would drive, I would use the undercut, this finger, so this will be the first finger to make contact, and then I'll cup, but as I'm cupping it, I would drive, I would use this right here, you know what I'm saying, this finger, and, and my thumb, and drive forward, you know what I'm saying, and when I do that, look, boom, see how high my hand is, halfway up on the slide, man, and I'm engaging the um, slide stop every time, but for some reason with my Glocks, that never bothered my Glocks. They locked back every time. The whole mag ran full. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't getting no light primer strikes, no none of that. But with these other guns, it seemed like with that same grip on my support hand, it's not working. So now I'm learning. I got to, instead of being up here, you know what I'm saying? Instead of being up here, boom, I got to dial it down, dial it down, dial it down, dial it down, all the way down here. Or some or somehow, you know what I'm saying? Just away from that slide stop. I gotta be somewhere down here, you know what I'm saying? But I'm getting it though. The more I practice, the more consistent it's gonna be. And while I'm talking about that, man, shooting, now that I'm getting better at shooting for real, it's getting easier to put shots down range consistently. It's just getting way easier to do that. I thought it was gonna be good. I thought it was going to be the triggers that made me a better shooter for real. I'm not going to cap. I thought it was going to be lighter triggers and different triggers that was going to make me be a better shooter for real because I thought, damn, that's why I'm always low left. That, that's why I'm always low left. But at the end of the day, it ended up being my grip. You know what I'm saying? It really wasn't, my, it really wasn't even my trigger discipline. I think really it was just my grip, how I was gripping the gun. And yeah, that's what I really think it was. Like my trigger discipline, unless my trigger discipline really got better. But I'm pretty sure it really did though. It's not like I ain't been keeping track of it, to be honest. Now that I got more time behind the guns, you know what I'm saying? It just feel like everything is more 
intuitive. It feels like everything is just more natural. That's what I should say. It just feels more natural. So now it's starting to feel like no matter what strap I pick up for real, you know what I'm saying? With a couple rounds down range, I can get pretty pretty comfortable. I don't say 100%, but like pretty comfortable with that gun for real. Bro, I guess it's just practice, bro. I guess it's just practice because I really just got like I got better at shooting. I just got better at I, I was notorious for low left. I'm telling y'all, notorious f with low left. When I just went to the range with the Nomad, I was shooting it with iron sights and I was still center mass. I was still center mass. Like to me, like that was an accomplishment. That just means my time at home dry firing is, is paying off. You know what I'm saying? Time at the range definitely paying off. But really, like they say, it started at home. Really, that being at the crib dry firing really dry uh, that's what really helped me for real it helped me get way more comfortable with my guns you feel me way more comfortable with them to the point where now if something is off or you know what i'm saying if something is off with my grip or something is off with the trigger i know what it is you know what i'm saying if i'm overstepping if i'm understepping on the trigger press i know now because i'm so comfortable i got so much time behind the guns now that it's not just like when I first started shooting, it was just, don't get me wrong, I was still, I was still, uh, I was infatuated with my guns, you feel me? I was still like clean them and hold them and shit and just and mess with them. But I really wasn't dry firing like that, like really dry firing and really, you know what I'm saying? When you really dry firing, you doing, you trying to, you doing things slow, you picking things up to speed, you know what I'm saying? You really evaluating where your sights is going, where your dot is going. And you making the adjustments as needed and, and really doing that repetitively until you got some consistency. You know what I'm saying? But when I first started shooting, it wasn't none of that, man. So I guess it really is just like putting in the time. And I'm not saying that like I'm the best shooter in the world or nothing like that. But I definitely see the improvement from when I started for real, for real. And I can only see myself getting better, man. I can only see myself getting better. Things I haven't even really got into for real is like doing double taps i'll be seeing people go crazy on youtube doing double taps and making guns look like they run better than they run <laughs> like people be man there's some good shooters out here man some good shooters out here for real you know what i'm saying i can't wait till i'm you know what i'm saying on that level to be honest with you i'm trying to get there though but i know i know me and you got to take the time that's just like with exercise and trying to lose weight or anything you're trying to do build muscle that's the same thing you just got to take time it's not going to happen overnight <laughs> But as long as you show up, put the time in, you know what I'm saying? You're going to come out on top. And that goes for anything in life, man. For real. For real. Excuse me. For real, for real, though. But yeah, man. I really just want to show y'all the P80 and how it's coming along, man. I know y'all ain't seen this in a minute. This is my baby. Next time y'all see this, man, we definitely get into the range with this. We definitely going to get to the range with this. Man, and this was a serialized frame, y'all. I'm hoping this thing just don't got no hiccup. It's a serialized frame. And if it do, hopefully it's like 100 rounds or less than 100 rounds before it's just running like butter. But I got high hopes for this. I feel like this is just going to be just as reliable as my Glocks. I feel like it's going to run straight out the gate. I don't know. It's just because it's a P80, man. I heard so much good about these. And the only bad I ever really heard about P80s is the ones... The 80% bills that people do they self. I never heard nothing bad about no serialized P80. So I'm pretty sure this is finna run, man. It's finna be a beast. For real, for real. And you know what's crazy? I love this setup. Because it's plain J and it's simple. You know what I'm saying? I got a little, little twang to it. You feel me? But I was thinking, what if I did like a multi-cam. But kept this as one of the colors in there. I did like a black, this. And like a dark gray or something. I feel like that'll be called like black this. And like, yeah, some type of gray. I think that'll be clean. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. No time soon, but it's a thought. You know what I'm saying? It's a thought. I got way more stuff coming for the channel for y'all, man, that I really want to do. Like, man, we still got this. Hold on. Oh, a couple things, actually. I still got to give y'all videos on the glock 48 this is my everyday carry this already got rounds through it man i just haven't recorded none i was trying to get my little camera situation figured out finally got it figured out so now when we go to the range i can actually bring y'all with me man but yeah gotta get y'all some videos with the g48 for sure and then i want to do side by side with that 
side by side. Hold on. And I can't wait to put that side by side with the SCT 43 SC frame, man. I can't wait to take this to the range. Because my Glock 48, honestly, is that's my best shooting pistol. Up to this point, that's the pistol that I shoot the most accurate. So, this right here, I got high hopes for this. And it feel good in my hand, especially after I modded it out. I'm going to have to do a separate video on this, man. I'm going to do a whole separate video on this. I know y'all like that too, man. Crazy. I'm going to have to do a whole separate video on this, man. I might not even take, because I usually like taking two or three guns to the range, but when I go with this, I might just focus on this. I remember when I first got my SCT-19, I felt the same way, just how sexy it was, how it felt in the hand. That's what we might end up doing. I might take this alongside the SCT-19, and we'll do it that way. That sound, that sound good to me. But yeah, man, I can't wait to bust this thing. I love how this feel, man. I really love how this feels. I hope I'm not riding too high with this either once we go. I hope it's just right on point, just how I like to shoot. Hope I don't got to adjust my grip too much or nothing like that. It will be Gucci with this, man. SCT 43SC. I love this thing. Love how it look. Love how it feel. Love that the internals that it came with is actually good, to be honest with you. Definitely Gen 5 feel. Feel just like a Gen 5, feel just like my G48. And this thing, man, I, I gotta get a holster actually for my 48 and for this, I gotta get a holster. Hopefully these fit in the same holster. Hopefully this frame fit in the same holster as my Glock 48. And if not, I might have to, I'm gonna get a light bearing holster. And you already know the only light we could get is the TLR6 or the TLR7 sub. And I'm not going with the TLR6. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the TLR7 sub. I'm gonna get a holster to, to accommodate that. And hopefully this fits in there too with the same lighting setup. But if it don't, if I ever do end up carrying this, I'll just carry it without the light. So it'll still fit in the light bearing holster. The retention won't be the same, but it'll still fit in there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what I'm thinking about with this. But man, you got to admit, this thing look crazy, man. This thing looks crazy. Even with the little chop back strap with the... It still add to the aesthetic. It got that. It got that real sleek. It's not even sleek. It got an edgy look to it, like an edgy, blocky tactical, like just mm, crazy, just crazy. Like, come on, they did their thing when they designed this, man. They really did their thing. They gave you a nice custom stipple job, and that's what a lot of these companies. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Some of these companies got some nice stuff. I give it to Smith and Wesson. I give it to Smith and Wesson. The 2.0 series. It look crazy, it feel crazy in the hand, and it, it, it go crazy. I ain't shot it yet, but they look crazy, you know what I'm saying? The Echelon, I think Springfield did their thing with the Echelon. The aesthetic-wise, the frame look real cold. The Echelon look cold. Sig, even Sig with they, uh, <laughs> they, uh, X, they X Macro, the 365 series. I think um, they frames look good, you know what I'm saying? No, but I ain't want to talk y'all ears off, man. Hey, if you're new to the channel and you want to see reviews on some of the best polymer and striker fire pistols on the market, and if you love Glocks and 9mm and Glock clones and all types of stuff like that, man, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, man. Go ahead and smash that for me. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's your favorite pistol right now. What is your EDC setup? Let me know y'all EDC setups, man. I want to start doing some cops or drops. If you ain't followed me on the gram, go ahead and go to my page and you'll see the link to my instagram man go ahead and follow me on the gram send me a picture of your edc so we can get cracking with these cop or drops man so let's run it up y'all hey and until next video i'll see y'all man it's your boy g tactical jody signing out